How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. This is Paddle and Malin. And you know this guy. <laughs> Clam is back. The Clam is back! So today we're doing kind of a remake or a reboot of an episode we did a while, the Iron Chef Challenge. Um, last time we both picked one ingredient, we split it, and cooked our rendition of whatever we thought would be delicious. And um, that's how we did it. This time we're gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna go my way, Will is gonna go his way. We're gonna each have our own cameras. We don't know what each other is targeting or harvesting. Um, and we're gonna come back here, reveal our, ing our, our ingredients, and we're gonna have an Iron Chef cook-off. And you're, you're diving. I'm gonna be diving. Okay. Um, I'm on foot. He's on foot. So here's, here's what's, here's what's kind of interesting about this. If you don't know Will, he is an exceptional chef. But he doesn't have a boat. I'm good at I'm a great boater, but I am not a chef by any means. So it kind of levels the playing field and makes it kind of interesting. Um, the only rule is you have to harvest your meat or protein um, from the wild. You can't go and buy something. Like you can buy some of the side ingredients, but you cannot the main protein you cannot buy. You have to harvest that. So other than that, there are no rules. No rules. So we're gonna head our separate ways and Godspeed. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes him to figure out. His keys are gone. Uh, he's looking. He's looking. <laughs> <laughs> Look on the fence. You got me. <laughs> I was like, I'd never take the keys out of here. <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are en route to the boat. Um, the dish I have in mind, I've kind of already been thinking about quite a bit, and I hate calling my shot, but it's already in my head, so it's already happened. But what I need is, I need a black grouper, and I need some stone crab. So that's what we're gonna be targeting. Um, I'm bringing Malin with me in the name of safety. I don't wanna be out there diving deep alone. So we are headed down to the boat. Hopefully we can find a grouper and some stone crabs. As we all know, Aaron is an incredible spear fisherman. He's an incredible diver. Uh, he's gonna come back with fish. He's gonna come back with fish or lobster. I already know that. So, where my skill set lies, and this is something that I am very proud of, is that I can cook with the offcuts of fish, meaning the heads, the collars, the racks, the innards, the livers, you name it. I can make it taste delicious. So, I'm gonna approach this in that way, meaning, we're doing just that. I put out a f couple of phone calls to uh, some of the commercial guys, a little bit windy here, uh, some of the commercial guys and some of the charter captains to find out when they come back in if I can take the heads and the collars and whatever's discarded and we're gonna use that for this challenge. So in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little sightseeing around Key West and uh, maybe even some fishing, I don't know. Alright, here we are at the southernmost point. Well, we're getting follows, but it's all like little stuff. It's nothing that we want. Um, let's keep moving. Cheers. What do you guys think Aaron's up to? It's really good. So I'm pulling up to the first spot I want to work, or check rather. Um, and I'm kind of just driving around these numbers, seeing if there's going to be any ball of the life. 
see it just kind of rolls off down to about 40 to 80. And what I'm looking for is something like those little marks, but I want a bigger chunk of them. So that's the little ball I marked. You can see anchor's still setting. We're about to swing. But that's that life I'm looking for. Water looks okay. Maybe 20 foot of viz or so. I'll take it. Welcome back underwater, everybody. So this is my very first drop on the spot. The water was a little dirtier than I thought it was going to be. It's funny how the GoPro makes it look cleaner. I had maybe 12, 14 feet of visibility. The bottom was about 60, depending on where I dropped exactly, about 60 to 65 feet. I'm kind of scanning. You can see a small black there that I was unsure of. And there's a big Goliath grouper, is that thing that you saw right in front of me. Take off. I'm just kind of scanning, not seeing what I'm wanting. I really expected to see um, quite a few options here, but just a little slower. You can see some nice lemon sharks come in. Just didn't see what I wanted to. Dirty. Two big lemon sharks. So this is my, I believe this was my fifth drop. I'm not going to show you all of them because there's not a lot that goes on. But I did see one grouper that honestly was probably legal. I just wasn't sold on it. I really, really hate shooting undersized fish. So if I even question it for a second, um, I don't take the shot. You can see right here, this is a little black. L looking back and watching this video, this fish was definitely legal. It was just a little fuzzy and I... I just, I wasn't confident in it, so I let him swim. So the first spot did not pan out. I saw one black that was borderline. I just wasn't sold on it. So I moved down a little bit. The water actually looks a, a bit better. I only went half a mile down, but this is my next spot. Got some life on the bottom, so fingers crossed, I need a grouper. So on to the second spot. It really blows my mind sometimes how much the water can change in such a short distance. I mean, we only moved half a mile and I had an extra 15 feet of visibility, but I normally know this spot to hold a lot of fish, so I really had anticipated seeing some groupers when I got to the bottom. And initially on my way down, I start to scan and I don't see any and I'm honestly kind of thrown off. There's a nice mutton out in the distance. The camera may barely pick it up if you look closely. And uh, I'm scanning. I don't see anything. So I'm kind of scanning further out and I start to see them. They're a little further out on the edge, not directly under the boat. And I line up on this fish and I really thought I was farther away than I was. Just a little bit of water, um, fuzz and... I just I got closer than I should have and I spooked him and you can see the other groupers take off and um, definitely had a little bit of nerves going and I uh, kind of just pissed it for lack of a better word. that I landed just off of them and I didn't realize I saw a mutton a really nice mutton and there was like six or seven blacks but they were all off the side I didn't see them until yeah, I just no I, I lined up on one I thought and I just he was a little closer than I thought he was for some reason I thought he was further away and he, he spooked 
and then he spooked like literally like four or five more but I should be able to get a shot on one hopefully so this is my second dive I know where the fish are now so I shifted over just a little bit because I wanted to land a little closer to them a lot of times if you can get the sun at your back and drop straight down on them you get a little bit of a window where you're kind of a silhouette they don't know actually what you are yet um, I'm scanning up off the bottom. I, I see a couple fish I got in mind, and a really nice grouper comes by. Probably pushing 20 pounds, and I line up, and I just quite honestly rushed a shot. I went against everything I preach. I um, I didn't even like the shot I had. I think I just had a little bit of nerves going and thought, thought it was better than it actually was, but I knew in my head I rushed it, and um, unfortunately the shaft sailed right over him. So you can actually see the anchor line um, at the beginning of this drop, and I had moved to the front of the boat. I did three more dives between now and that second one. Um, didn't see any fish or get a chance at any. So the fish I know are spooked. They're starting to spread out and kind of move away from the area. So I'm trying to just get further away than I think that they may have swam, get on the other side of them. I saw a few swim towards the front of the boat that I hadn't checked up there yet. Whether or not that actually works or makes sense, I don't know. But that's just how it it goes in my head. And I see a nice grouper that I got in mind. I know that they're a little spooky already, so I don't want to charge them too hard. And I see that this fish is going to swim behind this pillar. And right when it goes behind that pillar, I do three big kicks and try and close the gap. And it, uh, luckily enough, put me close enough to take a shot. Um, and I had the fish that I needed. And this is why I don't push my dives. You never know when you're going to need to go back down or you might need a little extra time. Uh, my line got caught around the rock there and I really don't want to leave that fish down there because there's a good chance it's going to get eaten by a shark. And as always, to keep things realistic, I think I took about probably 10, 11 dives over a span of about an hour and a half to get one fish. I mean, I do have time. Now let's do some more fishing. All right, I'm up in Sugarloaf now. We're gonna do a little bit of bridge fishing. I know that there's mangroves over here. I know that there's grunts. I got a small hook, some uh, frozen shrimp. I might be the only person that is going out fishing hoping that they don't catch anything. And the reason why is because I know that the commercial guys or the charter guys, they're going to come back with some cool stuff, whether it be a head, collar, or something cool bycatch, you know, something that they don't particularly want, like a blue runner or something. Yeah, just some frozen shrimp and a little hook. No weight. Well, I'm not going to bore you. I'm getting sniped by a bunch of small stuff that's just stealing my bait. And the one fish that I brought up was about the size of a credit card, so definitely not worth showing you that. Um, man, let's head down to the dock and see what the commercial guys are bringing in. It's always good to have friends. No, don't you yell at me. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so see, Aaron thought he had me, but I got an inside man. If you're ever down in Key West, Key's Fresh Seafood in the Hogfish Marina, and that's the man right there. <laughs> so these guys go out, how many days? You go out for two days, a day? They went out for four days, 
and while they're catching their targeted species they get a little bit of bycatch one of those bycatch would be rosy uh, black belly rose snapper so Johnny's got a couple of those I'm gonna grab some and we beat Aaron at his own game perfect got it nope I'll take them as is thank you Johnny <laughs> Now before anybody gets on me for picking up those fish, I just want to point out those guys go out, they're deep dropping, they're targeting grouper, queen snapper, vermilion snapper, the black belly rose snapper is a bycatch and they're taking them from such depths that when they pull them out they can't put them back, the fish are dead. So in my opinion why do I got to go out and kill more fish when those guys already got them and they don't fetch a lot at the market. So they're not really something that Johnny was worried about to say the least. So even though I didn't harvest it myself, I didn't pay for it and I'm doing the sustainable thing. So keep that in mind. First target has been acquired. Um, just honestly, I pissed the first one. I landed on <laughs> it. First drop, I was a little off of him. Second drop, I landed right on him. I'm not kidding, there was probably, within an eyesight, eight to 10 black groupers. I whiffed it on a big one, probably 20 pounds. I just, I rushed my shot. I broke my number one rule. But luckily, um, a few of them hung out and I got one. So that's what we need. First step, and now uh, we're gonna go peek inside and see if we can find some stone crab. So the pressure was off. I had my grouper. I know I can make a decent dish if I just have a grouper. Now stone crabs would be the icing on the cake. And luckily enough, there were quite a few around. Kind of just using that pop them out method. Kind of disorient them. Really don't want to get my finger in there. I've been grabbed by enough of these to know how much it hurts. I had a couple of you asking if it could actually remove your finger. I really don't think it could. It could probably maybe fracture the bone if you let it really get a hold of you, one of the big ones, but typically it's just a little bit of bruising, a lot of pain. Sometimes they'll get your skin, depending on what kind of gloves you got on. And this was pretty cool. There's actually two in the same hole, and I see the smaller one first, and I see the arm of the other one and realize how big this one is. And um, this thing was absolutely giant. Probably one of the Probably top three biggest I've ever caught. And anytime I make these stone crab videos, I get people that tell me they saw an article that said take one claw. Some say two claws. If you go on the internet, every other article tells you something different. I'm going with logic. Logic tells me I'd rather have one arm than no arms. So I always leave them with one. And before I put the big one back, I wanted to see if the other one in the hole was legal. So you see I dropped the claw so I got a free hand. And try and pull the smaller one out. But just by looking at them, I can tell the claws are too small. So I put them both back where I found them. And this is just to show you they can still survive if you remove the claws properly. I had someone tell me that they twist the claws off. Do not twist them. Um, if you twist them, that little socket where that claw meets the body will rip out and the, the crab will essentially bleed out and die. But these two were broken properly. They're starting to heal and this crab is alive and well. Sing it, babe. <laughs> so I found what I was looking for in a bonus critter. Got some stone crab claws. This is probably, probably one of the biggest ones I've ever caught. Close to it. Not the biggest, but darn near close to it. That is a monster. That one I may have to eat myself. Don't know if that one's going in the dish, but I'll call it a success. 
got everything I set out for, so we're pulling up back to the dock. We're gonna head to the house and see Will and we'll reveal our secret ingredients. All right, we're back at the house. So we have secretly put our ingredients under each side, so I don't know what he has, he does not know what I have. I know what you have. Um, but before we, <laughs> before, we wanna re before we reveal this, we're gonna cut this off and do some of the cooking, or all of the cooking on Will's channel. So if you watch to the end of this video, on the recommended screen, it'll be the same title video is gonna pop up. You just click on that and all the cooking will be on Will's channel, Cooking with Clams. While you're over there, be sure to subscribe. And the way that we're gonna do this, once we reveal these ingredients, we're gonna click clean or prep or whatever we have to do to what we have. We're gonna go upstairs. We're gonna have two unbiased judges that are gonna score us based on presentation, taste, and originality. So to make it a little more interesting than, instead of just picking one winner. So um, other than that, like, do you want to take a guess as to what I have here? Based on the shape, I'm thinking thinking lobster, but I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. I'm I'm saying, can I touch it? I didn't touch <laughs> yours. Ah, all right. <laughs> I'm going to say grouper. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Whoa. Ah. Whoa. Whoa. How'd you get Rosie's? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I got wild. <laughs> oh, so that's man. actually what I set out for. This was a bonus. I wanted both. Started with my grouper. Look at the size of this one. Okay, I may, I may okay. have to. Eat, I may have to eat that one myself. Um, so I. Went, I was not expecting that. I went to the dock as Johnny B was coming in and offloading, and I said, "Johnny, do you have any bycatch?" And he goes, "What do you want? You want?" It? And he pulls out a queen snapper and I'm like no bye catch <laughs> bye catch <laughs> because I got a bunch of rosies and I was like that's beautiful but there's no rules there was no rules I think I'm gonna need the collar and the head off Ooh. of this grouper to add to my rosies <laughs> I like it all right this is gonna be fun we're gonna break it over to Will's channel be sure to go over there and the video like I said will pop up on the screen and oh, we're gonna man. get to cooking what are you gonna make don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> See you there. <laughs>